want to hear a story about aliens? <laughs> I have a story about aliens. Nothing E.T. though, this is some serious stuff right here. It all started on a dark and stormy night. In space. We were responding to a routine rescue mission, you know. Crazed alien gets on board a ship, the queen hatches, starts to propagate her kind, wipe out the entire crew. You know, this stuff's pretty routine. But what I discovered... Still Come to a stairwell leading up to the second level, heading up. Affirmative. That's a negative on vectors. Right. Hold on, there's a door here. I have a bad feeling about this, but I'm heading in. Be because I'm a space hero guy, so I'll be fine. Just don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. Found it. Room in the report. Um, decked out in a bunch of anime crap. Uh, lots and lots of blue ambient lighting. I'm not really sure what's up with that. A uh, picture of a guy in yellow spandex, a robot, girl in a Sailor Moon shirt that is way out of his league. Yeah, this is the race. Okay. Just gotta find him and the rescue mission will be finished. All I gotta do is... Oh, God. It's the Queen. It's awake. It's awake. Abort! Abort! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Okay, uh, don't worry guys, don't worry. Everything was fine, I I'm sure. I got into a really epic space battle with the alien queen, and I, I, I Sigourney weavered it up, The you know, I, I blew out the door, and the alien got sucked out into the space place. I I've never seen Alien. I should really do that. But uh, anyway, uh, I don't even understand the whole plot of what I just showed you, honestly. Was I the person talking, or was I the one walking around? Are we on a space station right now? I, I, I don't know, but it looked cool, and that was all that mattered. Okay then, so student number two of class 1A, Mina Ashido, uh, also known by her hero name, Pinky. That's a really lame hero name. Really lame. And you know what? Screw you, Midnight. Because at the beginning when she came up with her hero name, her first idea was Alien Queen. And, and, and freaking Midnight was like, that doesn't seem like a hero name. And she changed it to Pinky. And then they're like, oh, that's so adorable. Okay, look, I'll give it to you. Alien Queen is kind of have, you know, overtones of a villain name rather than a hero name. Like, let's use my example I always do, you know. There's a bank robbery in the city, and like, oh look, it's Charge Bolt, or oh look, it's Sugar Man, or Tail Man, they'll save us. I can understand if the people were running out of the bank from the robbers, and they look on top of the roof, and somebody shouts, look, it's Alien Queen. Some other people might run back into the bank, like, wait, what? There's robbers, and now there's an Alien Queen? We gotta get out of here. I'll take my chances with the robbers you know um so i i get it why it's not really a hero name but come on that was it was obviously a reference to you know ridley scott you know alien and everything like that it's just that pinky really that's the best you could win it with i don't know acid girl that would have been cooler not acid girl maybe because acid that might seem once again villainous like she's gonna burn your face off with acid uh which by the way she she does i mean that's her thing you know she uses acid as as 
a main weapon, which you figure you have to be really careful with that because the whole thing of being a hero is that you don't want to like seriously maim or, you know, hurt anybody because you're a hero, even a villain. You shouldn't just run up to a villain and manage to, you know, just completely incinerate them at, you know, like Bakugo very well might. So he's got to have to have some restraint there. So Mina has to be careful with that. She just can't run up to a villain and just spray acid everywhere like a fire hose and then all of the villains are like oh god we're all melting and then they're all just piles of goop by the time the cops and the ambulances show up and it's just like i did my hero work i'm like oh my so yeah uh her quirk though is is useful in other ways she usually uh works by secreting the uh, acid out of her pores and so uh she wears a special costume which you know is resistant to it and everything and she could spray the acid on the ground and she could like use it as a slip and slide you know she did this when they were in the battle trial her and aoyama teamed up um so there's other ways that she can do it. During the provisional license exam, she wanted to come up with a super move where she could, like, shoot the acid out long range. And we see that if she just holds out her hand and tries to admit it that way, it's it's kind of a really weak stream that just comes out of her hand. It doesn't really have enough, like, pressure. So ectoplasm came up with the idea, like, maybe if you cup your hands together like this, it'll go further. And it did. It's nowhere near, like, you know, a, a really long range technique, but at least it's something that she can do now. Um, Horikoshi has come out and said in the supplemental material that he really wants to do more with her, uh, show what she can do, and like her personality and everything, her quirk off, and I, I guess that we're definitely going to get uh, some sort of battle or arc focused on her, uh, given what Horikoshi has said about her. You know, I'll be honest with you, Ashido, to me, always seemed like one of the characters that um, Horikoshi was just trying to design in a really cool way and he forgot to add a personality to her, you know, like, oh, well, there's maybe too many human-looking students in Class 1A. I mean, yeah, you have Tokoyami and Koda, but we need to have, like, a, a, you know, and I don't even know if Suyu really counts, because Suyu, you know, she's an adorable frog girl, but she's still more human than anything, you know, like, Tokoyami has a straight-up raven for a head, Koda looks like a... Honestly, he looks like some sort of rock creature. That's what I always thought Coda looked like, or like the thing, except with like a pointed head, uh, like a really calloused skin or something. It actually looks kind of ooky, but maybe we'll get to Coda next time. Who knows? But um, yeah, maybe Korakoshi was like, we need a one more character that really looks unique. And so he designed Ashido with like um, a female Majin Buu, or, you know, that, that's, that's the one I think I get a lot of uh, references to. People call her that. Uh, but yeah, pink skin, pink hair, horns. And uh, the um, you know black uh, scaria in the eyes. I, you'd think I'd be able to pronounce that word because it's you know it's the same thing in Bleach. She has hollow eyes. There you go, hollow eyes from Bleach. And uh, yeah, and then that's a really unique design with the horns and the hair and the pink skin and everything. Um, but beyond that, beyond her really unique appearance, like you'll definitely be able to pick her out of a crowd. Um, hasn't really done much of anything. Didn't really do much during the uh, sports fest, didn't participate in the battle with Stain, didn't really have much of a moment during the uh, training camp, or, you know, didn't go to Kamino, didn't really do anything during the Chisake arc. Uh, oh, oh, cultural fest! It was her idea to have an awesome dance number! do 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 You know, this is why I don't go to discotheques. For one thing, I think there are still discotheques, and for second, this is my idea of dancing. Just pointing in the air a lot. <laughs> I've actually never, I've never went to a club or a bar or any, well, I've been to bars before, but I've never went to, like, a dance club place, you know what I mean? So, maybe I would be kick at that, I mean, I'd be awesome at that, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Ashido, um, a personality, okay, we can talk about that. She is, uh, the probably the most extroverted out of all of the girls in the class. You know, Jiro is kind of res reserved and shy. Momo is obviously the smart one. Uh, Uraraka is, is a little bit more outgoing as well. But when it comes to Mina, she's the kind of person that's just really outgoing, really bubbly, happy personality, uh, really expressive with her hand movements and everything. You know, I've known girls like her in school. Actually, one of the girls, the first girl I ever had a crush on actually was kind of like that. So I have a kind of a soft spot for Mina there. Um, 
And, you know, honestly, I could totally see her as the girl that started the friendship between all of the girls in Class 1A. Uh, like, she was the one, because, you know, you start high school, you start a new place, you know, not a lot of your friends are there. Um, at least, that's the way it is in Japan, because in Japan, when you're moving on from, like, a junior high to high school, it sort of works like the same way that college works here in the States, where you don't always have to go to just one school. Like, the way it is here, you're usually, you're, you're stuck in one district your entire life, unless you move. Move. And in that district, there's an elementary school from grades kindergarten to fifth, and then there's a junior high or a middle school for six, seven, eight, and then you finish out your, your uh, education in grades nine to 12 in a high school. And that's always going to be in like the same area, same district. So you're going to have the same class throughout your entire journey from when you're like five to when you're 18. But in Japan, it's different because you can actually apply for various high schools, and then after that, you apply for various colleges. Oh, I wonder if there's a uh, a college based around hero you know you know studies or whatever in the my hero academia universe i wonder if there's one like that or they don't even bother and they just like as soon as you're out of ua as soon as you're out of high school you can have the potential to become pro as soon as you're like 18 or maybe there's like extended education i, I don't know i'm wondering because after the kids get out of school, is there really even a My Hero Academia manga after that point? You know what I mean? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. What, remember, the whole story of My Hero Academia is actually being told um, by Deku when he's, like, older. As, like, I don't know if to say he's an adult, like, he's in his 30s, but it's being told by him. Like, he's recollecting all of this stuff to you, like, in a memoir or, or something. So, keep that in mind. I would actually... Honestly, I would have been happy if they get out of UA and we still have a story arc or two. Because I feel like a lot of manga that focus around... Like, look at Assassination Classroom. That's just one example. Um, but there's a lot of other examples of a manga that takes place in school. And as soon as the students graduate high school, the manga ends at that point. Like in Assassination Classroom. You know, we have that last chapter where we cut to see what all the students are doing. But it's the story's over. They don't continue on to see what they were doing. Like, we don't get another story arc of them all you know grown up at that point i would love to see that with my hero academia like they're done with school but they're still all heroes now and they're just we get like separate chapters where we see Ida doing his ingenium things you know rescuing somebody from a burning bus or something then we cut to to um mina teaming up with Hagakure or somebody you know like i would love that but yeah i could see what was the point i was trying to make here i was talking about like the, at the end of the series and then deku and then high schools oh okay I could see Mina as being the one that says, you know what, this is a whole new school, we don't know anybody, um, all of us girls should go out to, and sing karaoke tonight or something. So I could see her as the one that, like, made that first step, and now all the girls in the class are just kind of, like, really good friends. So, yeah, Mina, Mina is that kind of person, very very bubbly, very outgoing, extroverted personality. All right, is, um, is that it? Nah, that can't be it. There has to be other stuff. Oh, um, you know, every time I do one of these videos, I don't talk about this one aspect of it, and I kick myself every time. I keep telling myself, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. I never do. Instead of just talking about what their quirks can do right now in the series, talk about how they can improve their quirks. And I've done that a few times, but like with um, Ojiro's video, I wanted to talk about how you could like attach things to his tail. Like if Ojiro took like a spike or like a, like a spike choker or something, but wrapped it around his tail, bam, that would be may, may, massively more useful. Massively, massively more useful, you know? So yeah, I always want to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, so for Mina, because she has acid, I was wondering, like, what exactly is the level of acidity there? Because if you could take that acid that you secrete from yourself, kind of disgusting, but hey, so it was kind of Bakugo's quirk, and you can put it in, like, a container or something, and the container doesn't get eaten away by said acid, you could use that as a weapon. Also, with something that would be useful is if you can control the dilution of your acid. And I don't think... Mina's really been a character that hasn't been focused on all that much, so I don't even know if it's if it's been referenced that she can do that, if she can control the levels of acidity. You know, if she can, like, um, you know, like Coco from Torico. Coco is a character that could emit poison from his sweat glands, and he could control the the uh, acidity and the lethality of that poison. He can make it poison that was, you know, going to make you a little sick, or he can make it really, like, potent acid kind of stuff. So if Mina had that same ability, if she could learn how to control her acids, uh, you know, acidity and stuff, and also I think she can 
control its like uh, viscosity. You know, like like if it's like the substance, like the the texture of it. I think she can control that, but I don't think it's ever been stated that she can actually manipulate the uh, levels of acidity because that way, if she just sprayed it on an opponent and it didn't actually melt them, but it just kind of like you know irritated them, like sort of like Suyu's ability as a frog, she can spew that like a uh, substance that can irritate the skin. If like, Mina is chasing after a bunch of villains, and she's like, acid shower, acid rain, and she just, like, takes her hands and just sprays it all over them. Not something that'll actually dissolve them to the bone, but something that would, like, cause them intense irritation and pain to the point where they wouldn't be able to run away. Where they'd be like, oh, God, it's burning, ah, and they get it in their eyes, and it's like, I can't move, I'm being stunned by this stuff. So, yeah, stuff like that, at least that way, we wouldn't have to worry about her violently hurting a lot of villains whenever she went to a crime scene, you know, something like that would definitely work better for her if she can learn how to control her quirk in that way. Also, sprouting a second mouth out of her uh, current mouth, that that would be something useful. Um, she has horns, but I don't think they're really, um, I don't think she can do anything with them. I don't think she can, like, spray the acid out of her horns or something. Uh, I think they're just aesthetic-wise. I mean, maybe, I guess, as a last-ditch weapon, you could, like, charge into your opponent like a battering ram. That actually looks like it would be massively painful. I would imagine it would be like, you know, if you have long nails trying to, like, attack your opponent with your nails and all your nails get bent back at the same time, it'd be like, ugh. So maybe they're a little bit more durable than that, but they are connected to her skull, so probably, probably would do more harm than good there. Um, yeah. Oh, is there anything else about Mina? Come on, Matt. There's got to be something. She's a dancing fool. She knows how. Girl knows how to dance. I'll tell you that much. Oh, um, she's got big boobs. Okay, when we start getting to that point, then we know that there's really nothing else out of, of worth that we can mention. If I'm just like, all right, there's nothing else. She's got a nice rack, though. I'm like, all right, all right, fine. Oh, uh, yeah, I figured this was going to be one of the more shorter ones. Yeah, it's it's not really until you start doing these. Like, you actually sit down and you start going through all of these characters and you realize just how much Horikoshi, the ones that Horikoshi has focused on and the ones that he hasn't. Um, she's got a cool costume, though. I will say that. I do like the... Uh, the pink leopard kind of design that that she has going on for her. I think that works rather well. Um, we actually sell some balloons of that design at Dollar Tree where I work, and I was going to get some of those for the video, but they all say happy birthday on them, so I don't think that would have fit rather well. But I do like her design. Uh, Horikoshi does as well. Uh, he didn't just give her that just for, you know, just to make up for the lack of a personality. She does have a personality. It's just we haven't really got to see her in the spotlight all too much, so that's how it goes, I guess. But uh, anyway, I, nothing else to be said. I guess we'll move on to the D20. Mm, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's let's do this. So two and one. That's that's Ashido and Aoyama. Um, you know, the other day I, I ordered some more pop figurines because I know I got some videos coming up in the future. So um, I actually ordered uh, three of them. But one of them isn't going to be coming until much later. There was a delay on one of them, or they were out of stock. So I ordered I ordered Izuku's, and then I ordered... There's actually two of Izuku. There's one of Izuku with the um, uh, his, his hero outfit on, and then there's another one where he's wearing the uh, sports, you know, the gym uniform. So I just got the, the standard one. Then there, I got the one of Uraraka. So I'm hoping Uraraka's is next. And there's actually... There's a rare, like a super rare variant of Ochako's where she has the helmet on, a pop figurine, but it's like 300 bucks. And I'm not as committed to my craft as as that. Uh, to, to give you another perspective, for that skit I did at the beginning of this video, I was in Walmart looking for some kind of space mask. I really, I really wanted Star-Lord's mask from Guardians of the Galaxy. I really wanted that one, but they didn't have it. They didn't even have like a toy version. They had Black Panther. That's all they had. And I'm like, eh, it doesn't doesn't really work so luckily I found that gas mask here a fan sent me this years ago and I just found it I'm like all right this works um, but the only other option they had at Walmart was a Darth Vader mask but it was a hundred bucks and I'm like all right there's a limit for everything do I want to spend a hundred bucks just for a skit that really has nothing to do with the video probably not but yeah there's an ultra version of Ochako's and then I got a Todoroki one it's it's out of stock or something so it's not gonna be arriving until like December so the odds are that I'm gonna be doing Todoroki's video long before I ever get my hands on it but 
that's that's the situation there. Uh, let's roll that d20. Hopefully, we'll get one of these. You know, lovely couple here. All right. Are you guys ready? Here we go. What do we got? What do we got? I shut. We got 20 and 11. 11 is Shoji. All right, 20. Sorry, Izuku. Actually, I'm really happy it isn't you, Izuku, because I'm going on vacation to Florida in a few weeks, and your video is going to be a very long video, and I got a lot of other stuff I need to prepare for. So you, doing your video in the middle of all this probably wouldn't be a good idea. So uh, yeah, we already did 20, which was Momo. So moving on to 11, that is in fact Mezo Shoji with the Dupla Arms Quirk. He's a really cool character, and I think he'll fit right at home next week. I should have enough time to do his, because there's more stuff he more stuff to talk about than Ashido, I think, but uh, less than, like, Ochako or Izuku. So, yeah, but I'm always... I'm okay with you, Ochako. I'll talk about you whenever you want, Ochako. It's fine. I could be on a deadline. I, I would make the video on the plane for you, Ochako. I would disregard, you know, all airline laws and stuff and be like, Sir, you gotta put that camera down. You can't be filming a YouTube video in the middle of an aisle. Like, it's for Ochako. I'm doing this. But, okay. So, uh, Shoji's next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Teching 101, signing out. Watch out for the aliens. Keep, keep watching the skis. I mean skies.